congenital syphilis very very important from the point of mcqs okay so in syphilis we know the infection is by treponema pallidum so infection by treponema pallidum so there can be you know transplacental transmission during pregnancy or it can be during birth or it can be postnatally with the contact with infectious lesions so transmission can occur transmission can be transplacental or it can be during pregnancy or during labor during birth by contact with the infected lesions okay with infectious lesions right now transmission during early pregnancy transmission during early pregnancy can lead to stillbirth fetal loss abortions so transmission during early pregnancy can result in fetal loss in the form of stillbirths or abortions prematurity low birth weight or neonatal death right there are some signs early signs of congenital syphilis which include hepatosplenomegaly apart from the ones that we already mentioned like stillbirth abortions and low birth weight and all that apart from that there can be hepatosplenomegaly there can be jaundice okay diffuse lymphadenopathy can be there so diffuse lymphadenopathy painful peri osteochondritis and perichondritis can be there which can lead to pseudo paralysis of the limbs so painful lesions like osteochondritis osteochondritis painful osteochondritis and peri ostitis can due to pseudo paralysis that means the baby will have so much of pain that the baby will not want to move his or her own limbs so painful pseudo paralysis of the limbs can occur okay and there can be some skin lesions like mucocutaneous erythematous vesicobullous lesions can be there Muc mucocutaneous erythematous maculopapular or vesicobullous lesions followed by desquamation can be there so maculopapular or vesicobullous lesions involving hands and feet which is followed by desquamation as well okay shedding off or scaling so all these are early signs of congenital syphilis but more important than these are the late signs of congenital syphilis very very important often asked so let us see what are the late signs of congenital syphilis so late signs of congenital syphilis let us try to remember it from head to toe okay so one is the olympian brow or the prominent forehead okay olympian brow or the prominent forehead okay prominent forehead right the nose can be saddle shaped saddle nose then very very important as n number of times is the hutchinson's triad all of these are the components of hutchinson's triad except so very important is you need to know what are the components of hutchinson's triad so the name itself is telling you there are three components so the components of hutchinson's triad are hutchinson's teeth which are peg shaped or notched incisors hutchinson's teeth hutchinson teeth which are you know notched incisors like this so hutchinson's teeth are there okay then you have interstitial keratitis interstitial keratitis and sensory neural deafness okay so from head to toe here we are moving so olympian brow saddle nose then this is triad involving the teeth the eyes and the ears then there is something called regades regades are you know spoke like lesions moving out scars 
moving in a spoke wheel fashion from the mouth okay so rugates are there so then there is something called hygomenakis sign hygo menakis sign that is nothing but the thickening of the medial one third of the clavicle or the sternal end of the clavicle so thickening of the medial one third or the sternal end of the clavicle right apart from that there can be cluttons joints involving the knees swelling of the knee joints painless joint involving the knees cluttons joints involving the knees and they are usually painless and they can be saber shins okay saber shins which is the anterior bowing of tibia anterior bowing of tibia so these are some of the late signs of congenital syphilis that you must know of okay now prevention of congenital syphilis how do you prevent so you have to do prenatal screening for syphilis so vdrl test must be done for every woman during pregnancy so prenatal screening for syphilis by vdrl test and you can do screening for the lesions and all as well because you know untreated cases there is almost 100% risk of transmission to the baby untreated cases almost 100% risk of transmission 